Hello and welcome to Gutterick Farms. We're back with another episode of Farmville, North Carolina, and today we're going to be jumping into the rest of our corn harvest. And uh, we've been trying to sort out some of our issues with course play here uh, between episodes. And uh, thanks to a lot of input from uh, uh, you guys in the comments and some DMs and stuff, it looks like I might be having some problems with the headers, not so much the combine. Apparently the AI code, a lot of that is in the uh, header itself, which makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. And so I haven't yet been able to get things fixed, but I am starting to zero in on where the problems might be. And uh, through some testing and some feedback from some different people, I have found uh, some headers that work, some headers that don't. And so I'm going to be doing a lot of work to try and compare between them because if I'm having this problem, I suspect others might be having this problem as well. So if I can sort that out, I mean, at least for the stuff that I've been using in my series, you know, I'm fairly well connected with a lot of the modders at this point. Um, I'd love to reach out to them and try and uh, see if we can figure out how to get stuff fixed up here and uh, get some better stuff out there that's going to work more consistently with course play. Uh, but uh, no promises, no promises. It's been a busy couple of weeks, and uh, I'm a little rusty on my farm sim modding, so we'll have to see if we can make uh, any progress on that. However, today we're uh, going to open up this big field here, see if we can knock this field out. I really think we're going to be able to uh, get this field completely harvested in today's episode. And then if you remember last episode, we built a feed mill, and I have a, another small field over that way that we ended up purchasing. So we might need to jump over there and see if we can uh, get that field harvested at some point here as well. I'm not sure if we'll get to all of that in this episode, but we're going to get as much as we can done. I do enjoy a good corn harvest, uh, and this is going to be a lot of fun. This field should actually yield pretty well. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on this field making sure that we've had appropriate amounts of fertilizer applied and we did all of the uh, right things on it, spraying it and everything, getting it going with the precision farming bonuses here. So if you look down in the yield map there, you can see uh, based on the soil types, we've got some uh, okay areas and we've got some really good areas in this field as we get closer to the farm here. And uh, I'm really curious to see what we're going to get yield-wise. Uh, I'm going to take both of the headland passes off at the same time this time, rather than uh, my typical going around the field. And part of that is because we are pulling in some really good yields here. We're already over 50% just taking off the headlands. So I definitely wasn't going to make it all the way around the field here. I think I'm going to stay up closer to the yard and give us some uh, chances to unload here. In fact, I will probably unload right here on the end before we uh, start going down the long way on the field. I am just gonna grab these short rows real quick as long as we're up here though, and make life easier because I don't really wanna have to deal with these later on. And I think it's just gonna be easier if I take these and then back up and take the next 12 rows while we're here. Get all lined up here. It's uh, always fun trying to go in cab with this. Maybe what I'll do is when we're in cab, maybe I'll widen our frame field of view out a little bit so I can uh, see the header a bit. I believe my field of view settings are saved based on a vehicle and uh, in vehicle and out of vehicle, first person and third person. So I don't feel like this view is particularly widened. In fact, this view, I tend to like to run more like this. And I think that's gonna work out pretty well for us. So we've got three rows here before the long row. I think I'm actually gonna take those three rows off as well. And that's gonna let us just take the long row all the way down and not have an awkward uh, skip going on as we try to do the length of this field. I think this is going to save us a lot of uh, pain and effort as we keep going. We'll try and do it in cab here. Keep the snouts between the rows. It's been a minute since we drove a combine. Alright. 
and we're already at 73%. So what we're going to do, we're going to back this guy back up here onto the headland. And I'm going to bring the other vehicles over here now. We'll start with the truck here, uh, just because it was the first vehicle I jumped into. And no sense really unloading into the grain cart when we're at the standstill here. So I'm going to park right under here. It looks like I might have shut the combine off, actually. Oh, no, we're running. There we go. We'll let that guy start unloading while we get the grain cart tractor uh, fired up and brought out to the field here as well. Not that it's that far away, but we might as well just get everything brought over here so that we're ready to go. And I think I've been running with the um, a larger fuel usage turned on. You'll notice our Kubota here is already at 50% fuel. We might actually have to refuel the vehicles after this year. And there we go. We're all emptied out. I think we are going to take this 12 rows right here by the farm. Uh, that way we can kind of get vehicles up and down as we need to. Um, I don't know how we're going to approach this field. We'll probably just work from this way towards the tree line and handle the tree line at the very end. That's usually the not the way that I do it. I usually like to go all the way around and get uh, a path on both sides of the field cleared off. But we'll see, we'll see. As long as we are right here, though, I think this is the side of the field that it makes sense to start with. If we go back in cab, oh man, that's going to be... Uh, difficult to see what's coming on that fence line if this was real life we would definitely be stressing out about getting that outside snout caught on something but we're doing all right here staying in our rows i'm gonna hop out just to see we pick up a corn row here out of the blue that's uh, actually kind of annoying but I'm going to try and stay on our line here. In fact, I want to get GPS going. We don't have a GPS installed on this loner combine. So that's a little bit uh, unfortunate. So we're going to have to just uh, do this the old fashioned way and keep our snouts between the row. That's all right. That's all right. I am going to take this all the way to the end. And I'm loving that yield map. We're into some really good corn right now, which is uh, hopefully going to end with us having enough feed for these hogs. I am going to turn around here and try and take these short rows again. We'll jump out a cab to make sure I'm getting lined up on the right rows here. We left a couple stragglers docks on the left side there. Oh well, we will have to come back and clean that up at some point. But I think I'm going to clean up this one row behind the shed that we picked up. It's going to annoy me if we don't. I do like that we've left a little bit of a uh, grass border around the shed here so I can actually come straight into this and get all of my corn stalks without smashing into the shed. And it looks like I actually got two rows there in the corner. All right, oops, oops. We're knocking over corn rows, folks. We're gonna try and get this one, there we go. The position of the corn row and the animation not quite lining up for us. All right, so we're already at 50%. I'm gonna turn us around and let's take off these short rows over by the shed. That'll give us lots of room in case we need to come down here and uh, turn around or something. Plus, it just gets them out of the way. And then we can, I think, start our worker off uh, coming back up the long rows and go grab that grain cart. And we'll try to start doing a little bit of unloading on the go. Of course, we missed one stock there, which is going to annoy me. Oh, we're not taking a full header with here either. We're just doing uh, terrible on these headland parts. There we go. I am missing a GPS just a little bit right about now. My driving has never been the best, but we're going to get it done. And I'm noticing, so I've got my head lined up in the rows, but my row crop tires don't line up on the rows uh, 
I don't know if the rows are just not set up to be uh, the right width or if the tires are slightly offset or maybe I didn't pick the right settings here for the combine. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, I just noticed that we're driving on the row as opposed to in between the rows with our tires when the headers all lined up. And once again, we've got a single row here. So this uh, field, I probably should have been one row over the whole length down this field and we wouldn't have had the one row left here or along the back side of the shed here. That's all right. We'll pick this up and it'll put us in the right position to be on the long row heading back down that way. Our pipe will be on the right side and uh, we'll go grab that grain cart and start unloading ourselves, I think. With how much uh, feed is going into this hog barn setup, I'm really curious to start trying to do some math on how profitable this is going to be for us. We seem to be putting a lot of feed in there, and I really want to run the numbers on seeing some profits from that. Our combine is nearly full as well, so I need to get this uh, grain cart going right quick down here and start unloading it. It does unload pretty slowly, which is going to be a problem in trying to keep it moving here, given that I've wasted a good chunk of the path back down the field here. Oh, it got full before I even got down here. My goodness, this corn must be yielding awesome. I thought I would have had just a little bit more time to catch up here. We are going to try and get it moving again real quick. Do you want to unload on the go? See if we can do a better job of not crashing into the head of the combine as much this time though. There we go, look at this, lots of corn. With how slowly it unloads, we will be going all the way out to the end here and he's still gonna be half full it looks like. Uh, maybe we'll let him go. We'll catch him on the next roundup. That'll give us something to do. Keep us moving. I think he's got more than enough to get back down to the other end. And this truck is, if I'm being honest, not in a great spot for unloading. So let's hop back over here. We left it here originally just because we needed to unload the combine. Before it gets too full here, I think we're gonna bring it down the headland a bit spin us around and leave us pointed uh, back out towards heading up to the feed mill and I think we'll just leave him right here that should be out of the way we might get caught the one time coming back up here but I'm not too worried about it here we go the question is uh, do we fill up the front hopper with what we've got in the grain cart I'm kind of curious Oh, we do. Look at that. I'm going to hang on to these 13 bushels just out of mostly tracking and curiosity. I know that a full grain cart will fill up that back hopper, so that'll kind of give me an indication of the fact that we're about ready to send that truck off when the grain cart starts to get full. And it looks like the combine is almost back down to the other end here, which is awesome go ahead and get in position here and let him get turned around real quick. Now before I start unloading him I'm actually really curious. He's 73% full already. Nice. We're gonna see if we can actually unload 73% along the way down here. Try not to waste too much time getting into position this time. If we look at the yield map, you can see how good the soil is in different spots. Uh, we got two huge sections with that loam uh, sand type or loam uh, soil type, so we should be seeing a lot of great yields here. And of course, we are uh, running into the header a bit, but we did not stop unloading it, looks like, which is, I guess, the most important part. The combine's still going here. Got kind of a weak row on the outside here. It uh, shows up and disappears, so I'm not sure we're getting a full swap on the way back up, but that's all right. 
I do notice that this combine hat tends to uh, sway left and right a little bit more than other ones that I've had. I don't know if that's a function of the steering speed or what. Oop. We got just a little bit too far in front of the combine. I am going to let it finish unloading the last few bushels here just because we are sitting here. Guess I really don't need to, but I'm kind of surprised at how many bushels were left in there when I didn't really see that much left in the hopper. So we're at 410 bushels. This isn't going to be enough to top off that back trailer, but as long as we're up here, we might as well just unload this. It's going to fill it up most of the way. Um, we'll have to get one more load to dump in here. I think we'll have enough coming back up, though, to top off this truck, which normally I think I could probably let that combine do two rounds before I need to unload him. But we're going to unload him on the way back up again just to make sure we can top this truck off and start running this up to the elevator while the combine keeps uh, knocking acres out here. All right, so we have uh, followed the combine down the row here. And I've got another 280 bushels from one round with the combine, which is doing really good. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, get this semi or this semi this grain truck all topped off here uh, not gonna take but a moment and I need to run this up to the feed mill and hurry up and get back or else we are gonna have a combine sitting around waiting for us I suspect luckily the ground is pretty flat here so we're gonna be able to sneak right up on the road here off out of the field without using the normal driveway and trying to sneak around all those obstacles we should probably uh, stop and cover up our tarps here real quick. There we go. And let's get cruising up here to the feed mill. I love that you can see the top of the feed mill over the trees there. If you uh, look real closely over the tree line, that structure is tall. So oh, at least we know where we're headed. So we're arriving up here at the feed mill, and one of the reasons why I actually wanted to do this bit on camera is so let's, we can check in and see how we're doing on actually getting the feed made here. I've been running the time up a little bit faster as we've gone through the episode here. And so you can see we've already got another 22,000 liters of pig food. Uh, made and we're dumping a fair amount of corn into the production facility here uh, Which is good while that's dumping. I suppose we can actually come in here to the menu You can see our garden is actually doing pretty good here still uh, with seeds and fertilizer and the feed mill we're getting there we are getting a fair amount of bushels dropped into the uh, storage and the pig food is catching up here slowly uh, we do generate a little bit more pig food volume than we have corn, which is good. That'll help me uh, with uh, how I'm feeling about getting this all done and having more feed for our hogs. And if I just hop out here real quick, I guess we can get into the feed truck. I'm kind of curious to fill this up and see how much we've actually got. 24,000 liters made already. And if you recall, we brought some feed over here and they're already starting to bring these hogs up in health, uh, which was really what I was hoping for is to see the health come back up before we get to the end of the day and the uh, puberty and reproduction rates tick over. You can see puberty is growing, uh, but the reproduction rates are frozen right now because the health of the hogs is in the red and so i think reproduction only gets calculated at the end of each day and so we have till the end of the day to try and get that health up and see if the uh, reproduction rate is going to move forward it looks like we're going up at about 10 percent per tick maybe that's per an uh, hour in game that we have feed i'm not really sure uh, so we're going to keep an eye on that uh, however, the pig food with what we put in there so far is 31%. I'm going to leave that there. We don't need to make another run with it until we uh, get a full truck this time. Uh, we only ran the partial truck up to the farm last time because we had no food at the farm. Well, we didn't make it back before the combine filled up. He's sitting there waiting. But uh, that's all right. We're going to get caught up here real quick. 
going to go ahead and just leave the truck in about the same spot we were at before. And I'm not going to bother trying to unload the grind wagon right now, the green cart. We're going to get down here and get this combine unloading and worry about uh, getting the trucks filled up a little bit uh, later here. It's more important to keep this combine moving. Always unfortunate though when you have to sit and wait for it to unload, I find. I always like unloading on the go whenever possible. All right, we're at about half. I'm going to go ahead and get the worker going again, and we will unload him on the way back up. Uh, I did go to half, though, because, uh, like we've seen, the unload speed's so slow. I don't think we'll even get him emptied heading back up with half. Oh, I jumped a row there a little bit, it looks like. Hopefully we're not missing any invisible corn off to the other side, but hope, I think it'll be all right. We've only got a few more rounds of the uh, longer rows here. We've actually knocked out a huge portion of this field a lot quicker than I thought we were going to. So um, that's uh, that's good at least. A little bit of a surprise. And it looks like the workers going to figure out how to uh, get back on track here from a row spacing perspective. There we go. And we'll do our best here not to run him off the side of the field with our big tires. I guess, uh, I don't know if I put the longest pipe on this combine or not. I think that maybe the other model combine has an even longer pipe on it. But uh, we're getting by, we're getting by. I would not want to try and run this grain cart alongside this in real life though. Only having uh, this much space on the side of it would make me nervous. I would not want to be wrenching on the header after I ran it over with a grain cart for sure. I think I could do a lot of damage if I was attempting to do this in real life. We're gonna slow ourselves down just a smidge and try to fill some up in the front of the grain cart as well. We're actually getting really full in this grain cart and there's still some corn in the hopper so i think we've got a full enough load here that we're going to be able to top off one of the sections of the uh, grain truck for sure especially because we did actually hit 100 percent on the way back down there i was not expecting to completely fill this grain cart up so man i'm continuing to be impressed with our yield here i can't wait to see uh, how much hog feed we end up getting into our uh, into our silos there as far as can I get through a whole year with the feed amount oh man we'll we'll find out I'm now getting kind of curious to see what that little cornfield up by the feed mill is gonna do I know we bought that little piece of land so we didn't actually do all the things to make sure that the yield was gonna be maximized on that field um, so I'll, I'll be curious to see what the difference is in yield over there versus over here. I do miss the uh, bushels and acre counter from uh, previous unit convert versions in FS19, where it would keep a running tally of what your average bushels per acre were. Um, that was a real handy metric to have. I know precision farming is kind of giving us an average yield percentage, uh, but I do like seeing the just... Uh, straight up numbers on the uh, real time how many bushels an acre I'm getting and then the average of how many bushels an acre I was getting. Uh, I feel like I can re relate to those numbers a little bit more uh, just because we always had the yield monitor in the combines when we were driving them even way back in the day 25 years ago we had yield monitors so I guess we'll just have to resort to looking at the levels in the grain tanks and doing some of that math ourselves. We do have uh, quite a bit of corn in here already. We're already 39%, which means I should probably hop in here and be unloading on the way back down, uh, given that I've now dumped a little bit into that back hopper a couple of times. We may actually get enough on this pass down to top off that grain truck again, which is um, actually crazy. I wasn't expecting to 
run into a situation where I was the slowing factor here on harvesting our fields. I was kind of expecting to have plenty of time to run that truck back and forth. I would set up an auto drive course to do it. However, with the way that raising the hoppers on that grain truck works and the fact that it really glitches out and hits the colliders on the grain mill or the feed mill, uh, I don't think we're gonna do that. I think that that would just be asking for trouble. And so that's uh, another reason, like I need to slowly start swapping out my equipment for things that uh, work a little bit better with how um, the map I'm playing on is set up. I would love to start making use more of some of that automation and stuff. So I mentioned it in the live stream uh, that I did recently, but we may be uh, we may be wrapping this series up after a few more episodes. I hate wrapping series up uh, ahead of uh, hitting my goals, and so we are going to try and uh, work our way through here. Uh, and knock out some more of the goals here over the next few episodes and see where things go. Uh, but things have been going really well so far in this series. It's been a lot of fun outside of some of the technical issues we're having between equipment and uh, a handful of map related issues or map and mod combination of issues. But it's been a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying uh, taking a break from some of the other types of content I've done to use a little bit different style uh, equipment here in this series. So we didn't quite top off that grain truck. I'm gonna hop over here into it for a second just to look. We're at 82%, which is the total between the two trailers. So we'll definitely have enough here after one more pass, I'm thinking. I was just hoping that that was gonna be it, I guess. Looks like we are finally on the last pass of the long rows here, so we're getting closer and closer to done with this field. In fact, there's not even a full swath of the long rows over here, which is all right. We're still going to get lined up here and uh, start unloading, because we've already got a good third of a hopper here. And this means, actually, that we're going to need to take a pause and take the rest of these headlands off here, I think, when we get to the end of the field. Uh, just because otherwise we're not going to have a lot of luck turning around. In fact, maybe we'll grab this guy now while we're down here. And I'm going to go ahead and take off some headland passes. Uh, by the time I'm done taking these headland passes off, actually, we're going to be most of the way done with this field. That's all right, because I do think I'm going to need to take two passes off here along the woods. We do have a little bit of grass on this end, but I wouldn't trust the combine to completely leverage that and get turned around without bumping into a tree. So we'll just take two off and be safe about it. Uh, I think I am going to take the two passes off here, though. It looks like along the trees themselves, it's pretty straight and not too uh, close to the trees. So I can get a worker going again on uh, doing these shorter rows back and forth. As long as I get this corner taken out successfully. Kind of a combination of switching between in cab and out of cab to avoid the trees a little bit. I've been really tempted to pick up one of those Toby eye tracker uh, devices and give that a try. Uh, uh, to do a little bit more in-cab style farming. Uh, I've never tried one, but I've heard a couple of people said they really liked it, but not enough that I've been tempted to buy it. But I saw they're running kind of a sale deal on them right now with, uh, I don't remember how much, but it was a, a good chunk off. And so I'm really tempted to maybe pick one up and see how it works. If you've used one of those Toby eye trackers, I would love to hear from you in the comments to know what you thought of it, if it was worth the money, or if it's just more of a gimmick and it didn't end up working out that well for you with uh, Farm Sim. But either way, I think we're going to have enough corn here now to top off that uh, grain truck and hopefully get that run up there. I don't think the combine's going to get full finishing off these short rows, so... We should be able to finish this field up while we run that grain truck up to the feed mill. 
especially if we sit here for a moment and just uh, get this grain cart topped off a bit. I want to be 100% sure that we've got enough corn to fill that truck up. And we're all filled up, so let's go get dumped. We'll get back and we'll definitely be done with this field at this point. All right, so while we're dumping the truck there, I want to jump in here once again and just see how full we can get this trailer with the pick feed we've been making. I was running the time up at 5x, but I'm noticing we're getting into the later afternoon here and I want to make sure that uh, we don't get dark uh, in October here. I want to make sure we finish off all of our harvesting before the end of October. And we got plenty of feed coming in now. We got 66% in this truck. Uh, so we are going to be able to bring a full truck in uh, pretty soon, which I'm enjoying uh, seeing these yields. We got a lot of corn coming up into the feed mill today. I'm thinking actually, rather than drive this all back up to the farm, maybe I'll leave it here since we're going to jump in and harvest this other corn field and I can't run the grain cart or the combine in to unload the corn there. Maybe we'll just leave this here since I got to bring them both up uh, and unload into the grain cart anyway. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. We'll be bringing the combine up here shortly. So back up here on the farm, it looks like the worker didn't like how much I took off the headlands and couldn't figure out that there was still corn to harvest and just gave up. So that's all right. We'll finish off the last couple passes here ourselves. No problems. Always fun to do a little bit of harvest on our own. We're at 58% here in the combine. I know I've got quite a bit in the grain cart as well. What we'll probably do is just fill up that grain cart uh, when we're done here and then uh, run the combine up and start harvesting this other field. That's my thoughts at least. I'm anxious to get the rest of this harvest done, get all of the corn off of the fields. Let's see if we can do the full turn around here. I'm going to take the farthest outside. I don't know how many rows we've got, but it looks like I'm going to leave just a little bit of a straggler to get that one row. In hindsight, I should have stayed on the main rows and then let the stragglers be on the outside, but whatever. It is what it is. Always feels good to be on the last pass of a field. And we've got a pretty full hopper. Well, here we go. Well, that's the last of it. Uh, actually, no, we've got the one little row up here for about 30 feet that we left. Let's grab that on the way back up here. And then we have the unenviable task of trying to transport this combine over to the other fields there. Uh, those roads are mighty tight and we don't have a header trailer, so we're going to be taking it slow and trying to make our way down this road without having any traffic incidences, which I'm not necessarily feeling super confident on. However, before we worry about that, we are going to uh, just get this guy unloaded here, top off this grain cart. We've had a lot of fun getting the uh, second big cornfield done here. Our largest uh, cornfield this year, the most volume of corn we're going to get off of anything else uh, in the next few episodes. So it'll be a great spot for us to kind of take, uh, take a look and see where we're doing and how we're feeling about feeding these hogs for the rest of the year. So what we're going to do is wrap up today's episode and we'll get everything moved over here to the other field and knock off that last cornfield here in the next episode and probably get that hog feed brought up back up to the farm and take stock of where we're at from a hog perspective before we wrap up October. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, drop a like. It helps me out a lot. And uh, that's all for today. Ketterk out. Now, luckily, the ground is pretty flat here. Whoa, my gosh. Um, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, we took our chances and it didn't pay off all the places for a car to be.
drive uh, this whole thing back up to the farm since I know we're not going to be full down there. Oh my gosh. 